So my latest contact size pickup was actually my widest lens inside of my kit. This right here is the contact size 18 millimeter F4 AEG, and it's by far one of my favorite lenses that I ever had inside of my kit. So I bought this lens back in February of 2024 for about $566, which is a pretty standard rate compared to now. I bought this lens primarily because my widest lens at the time was the 25 2.8. With the C70, I ran the focal reducer, so 25 is perfect, but since I'm not running the focal reducer on the Komodo X, I wanted something just a bit wider to get those establishing shots, and 18 on the Komodo X sensor is just absolutely perfect for a wide angle lens. And when I first got this lens, I was beyond psyched on it. Once I put the mods on there and threw it on my camera, I was just so impressed with the image quality and just the handling of the lens. I know a lot of you are kind of turning your nose up towards the F4 aperture and yeah, it's not the fastest lens on the market, but vintage wide angle lenses that are fast are very, very expensive. And honestly, I don't mind F4 because you're shooting so wide. You don't need to get the shallowest depth of field out of the aperture. I'd rather have more in focus for a wide angle lens like that because the focus plane expands a bit more and the shot just turns out a bit better. But the cool thing with wide angle lenses is that if you get your subject really close to minimum focus, you get this natural depth of field because of the ratio of the subject to the sensor to the background, yada, yada, yada. You don't need fast apertures for wide angle lenses. F4 is plenty. And the size and weight of this lens is actually pretty in line with the rest of my contact size kit. It fits directly between the 50 1.4 and the 85 1.4. And it's actually a bit smaller than the 25 2.8. So for the field of view that you're getting, the image quality, the price, it's definitely one of the best wide angle lenses on the market. And spoiler alert, I sold my contact size kit. We'll talk about that in a later video. And if there's one lens that I missed from that entire kit is this lens. I wish I got this lens out more on set, but I bought it in February, sold the kit in March-ish, so I didn't have much time to go and shoot with it, but the times that I went out and shot sample footage with it, I was just floored with the whole experience of shooting on this lens. Of course, the lens feels great in hand. The focus throw is amazing just like the rest of the contact size lenses it's perfectly dampened it's smooth and it has a nice long range where it's really easy to pull focus as a solo operator and for the mods i kept things simple i did the ef conversion from simod and i got the ef cap from canon i don't like messing around with lens adapters from like the native vintage mount to whatever mount that i have usually those adapters are cheap they wiggle and they're not really the best quality and i have a really solid adapter from my sony fx3 which is the novaflex ef to e and then for my komodo and then the Canon, I had the Canon EF to RF. And then I have a Metabones EF to RF Cine. So EF is just super universal. You can find really solid adapters for cheap that don't wiggle and are usually weather sealed to prevent dust and moisture from getting into your sensor. I also did the front ring and cap from Simod, which are the 85 outer and 82 inner. All of my front filters are 82 millimeter diameter, so it makes sense to get a filter ring that goes up to that size. I don't like putting matte boxes on these lenses. I haven't really tried it, but the idea of putting that weight on the front of a lens that isn't designed for it kind of scares me and these lenses are hard to replace and it's hard to find mint copies. So I just don't wanna risk it. It would be nice to cut out some flare, but yeah, the front ring is really nice because I can get the cap on there with all my info. At a quick glance, I could see what lens I'm picking up. I could see the minimum focusing distance, the aperture, the focal length, and it just looks really nice and cohesive in my kit and it looks professional. The one weird thing to note about this front ring is that it's not like the other front rings that just thread onto the front filter threads of the lens. I think because this lens is so wide and it wasn't designed with the front filter thread, Red, I think, don't quote me on that. You have to get this front ring that clamps onto the front of the lens and you have to screw them in. That's one thing to know. I haven't had that front filter really move at all, but I guess that's another reason of why you shouldn't put a matte box on this lens because it's not being threaded into the lens. It's being clamped on with little screws that do mark up your lens. And the one thing to keep in mind is that the front element rotates as you pull focus. And this is exactly like the 80 to 200 and the 35 to 70. So you can't really use a CPL or a variable ND and pull focus. If you're locking it off, of course you can use that because you're not pulling focus and rotating the lens. But when you pull focus because the lens is rotating, it's causing your variable ND and your CPL to rotate as well which then causes more polarization issues and image artifacts because variable NDs are built with polarizers. It just becomes really tricky. So I would just use fixed NDs or if you're just locking it off, of course you can use a variable ND, but once you start pulling focus, it's 
definitely going to ruin your image and not be usable. This lens covers full frame, so it covers my Komodo X and my Sony FX3. I didn't get to try it on my C70 with the focal reducer because I sold it back in December. I've heard that certain lenses don't work with the focal reducer because the rear element is like pretty seated far back. So I would research that before throwing it on. I did hear a couple of things about it not working with focal reducers. But yeah, this lens is just really solid. It's the perfect balance of sharp and detailed, but still full of character. I didn't really notice too much chromatic aberrations or vignetting. They seem pretty well controlled. It also has this really nice warm glow that washes over the lens. And that's definitely like my favorite kind of flaring. I love when it's warm and glowy and nostalgic feeling. It doesn't feel too sharp or clinical, but yeah, the colors are super accurate. It's sharp. It's definitely one of my favorite lenses, especially on the red Komodo X sensor. I kind of regret selling those lenses. They're amazing, but I am excited for the new ventures that I have with vintage lenses. Alongside that, I haven't noticed too much focus breathing. I'll have to double check my footage to see if there's actually focus breathing there. But at the end of the day, these are vintage stills lenses that weren't designed for video. You're going to get focus breathing. So for the price and image quality and the value and the workflow that we're getting on these lenses, I can't really scoff at them for having focus breathing. I haven't noticed too much distortion. I was only really able to test this lens out at the beach or around home. I didn't really get to go and shoot architecture and stuff, but there are some sample clips that I took where I panned and like tried to get like a straight line to move throughout the image. I think there's a little bit, but it's nothing too aggressive like the Laowa 12 mil. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. As long as you're not really doing crazy erratic movements where you're like moving in a big circle and like your straight line is going from center to corner to corner and all that. I think it will be completely fine. I didn't notice anything too aggressive that would make me not want to pick up this lens. And I know I touched briefly on the aperture at the beginning of the video, but F4 really isn't the end of the world. I know people want to shoot in ultra low light scenarios at F1.4 or lower to let all this light in, but I don't really like doing that because when you drop your aperture that low, your focus plane becomes so razor thin that it's so hard to pull focus. And I just don't like when everything's a very blurry and blobby mess. And honestly, I stopped down to F4 and 5.6 with most of my lenses. So for this lens starting out at F4, it's pretty nice, but there are those scenarios where it would be nice to have an F2.8 to let a little bit more light in. That's a fair thing. Even on my 51.4, I rarely shoot at 1.4. So don't shy away from this lens because it's slower than the rest. Vintage lenses get very expensive at the wide angle lens, especially when they're fast. And this lens is definitely one of the best values you can get, especially on full frame, especially on the Komodo X. This is one lens that you need to have in your kit and it fits in perfectly in so many different ways. And one of the coolest things about this lens is that the minimum focusing distance is 12 inches. And one of my favorite things to do is to take a wide angle lens and get as close to my subject as possible, throw it all the way down to minimum focus. And it just creates this really immersive feeling because you're super close to your subject, which isn't normal, but it creates this natural depth of field separation from the background to your subject. And I just love it when lenses have a really short minimum focusing distance because it really opens you up to a lot more. Being able to get as close to my subject as I can allows me to get some really cool macro shots and more variety and it allows me to have that prime lens to be more versatile than it would be if the minimum focusing distance was a little bit farther. Being able to get up close and get a medium and step back and get a wide. And sometimes if the focusing distance is really short, I can get a really tight angle with that one lens. And when you're a run and gun solo shooter, having that versatility in one lens is a must have. So if you haven't really tried using wide angle lenses up close yet, I highly recommend it. And that's definitely one of my favorite things about this lens. But yeah, that's the Contax Ice 18 F4 AEG. It was by far one of my favorite lenses. And I really wish I was able to get it out on set more. I don't think I ever shot a job with it. I think I took it, but for the jobs I was doing, that was too wide of a lens to shoot with. This lens is just beautiful. The flares are wonderful. The image quality is perfect and it slots right in perfectly with any kind of lens kit that you have with your contact size lenses. I could see people going 18, 25, 35, 50, 85, and so on, or 18, 28, 50, 85. You can even do 18, 21, 25, 28, 35, 50, 60, 85. I could see this being a lens that everyone should pick up, especially for the price. The value you're getting out of it is just incredible. It's really hard to find vintage wide angle lenses that are this solid for this cheap. So yeah, that's a contact size 18 F4. Absolutely love that lens. 
And like my other contact size videos, I have some sample footage for you guys. This time I broke it up between my two cameras. So I have my Red Komodo X with the Nisi and Tokina IRNDs. And then I have my Sony FX3 with the Nisi IRNDs. So yeah, with all that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy the sample footage. And if you have any questions about this lens or my contact size lenses or the new lenses that I'm picking up, feel free to leave some questions down below in the comments. And if you guys are looking for more bonus content that's more frequent than my main channel, I have a Patreon and YouTube membership where I'm uploading at least least two times a month. And I just go into a lot of detail about the gear that I'm using, the reasons why I'll be doing some breakdowns here soon. And yeah, it's a lot of fun over there. So if you guys want more bonus content and to see what I'm using, check that out down below. And with all that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.